Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the bench today we have a customer's mail-in radio which is this Ham International Concord 2 which we've seen on this channel before. This one's got a little bit of a strange fault on it which was quite interested to see. So anyway let's get into the radio and let's find out what that fault is. So the customer bought this and it was supposed to be working supposed to be never tampered with you know we'll see about that but it was supposed to be working and as you can see channel one high band does work but then when you go on to channel 12 high band that should be triple five so no wonder the customer never heard anything on it because All the frequencies are wrong. But it's it's bizarre because it works for the first few channels and then goes and then goes wrong. And then as you go up to um channel thirty three and above, it corrects itself again. So yeah, no wonder the customer never heard anything on this. But the customer did say that it did after a while start to behave itself somewhat which made him think it may be a capacitor issue which yeah capacitors do fail in these but I don't think this is the issue so having a look at the PLL area I'm not sure whether that's been tampered with but everything else looks okay no other signs of messing around so let's check the binary input to the uh, PLL and it should be 1001 which it is and then yeah so that's the correct binary for the channel 12 so we know that's fine so we know the channel change is working fine We've got 5 volts into the VCO which yeah should be there anyway which is fine so what's the problem so let's check our VCO voltage, see whether that's going. Now this should go up incremental in the voltage. As you can see, it's it's all over the place. It is controlled, but it's not controlled in the correct way. It's not going up incrementally like you would expect the voltage to go up. So, do we have a faulty VCO? Well, let's drop a temporary VCO in, see whether it makes any difference. Once we've sorted the faults out on this radio, it will be getting a modification board and a voltage feed VCO. But for now, I'm just going to drop in a known green VCO, see whether it makes any difference. sure enough no it doesn't this is going up one channel and as you can see this is not a correct voltage it should be going up in um is it 10 10 millivolts not 100 millivolts so what's our problem well it's not the channel change and it's not the vco so let's change the pll I'll see whether that's our problem so I'm going to put in a, um, a temporary PLL once I've finally fished this one out. Tenth week of 81 date code. So with a test, v, uh, test PLL in, perfect, everything's working beautifully. So looks like there was something wrong with the programmable divider inside the actual PLL chip as you can see by the frequency counter everything is now working exactly how it should be and we can actually get onto triple five which it couldn't do before so that was our problem a faulty PLL chip so 
apparently this this had some capacitors changed well i can't see any but that one seems a bit loose and making some strange noises and it's not had any of the other usual one two one mods done so we're going to do those anyway but we've got we've got this thousand mic out because it was it was wobbling all over the show and just felt loose and felt a bit horrible but it is reading correct but we're going to put another one in anyway and the Darlington, looking at it from a certain angle, almost looks like there's a cracked trace on there. We all know what happens to these, the trace around this Darlington. Well, that end, uh, the top pin, you can see the track starting to lift anyway. But it's not broken. But as a preventative me measure, I put a small wire link across it just to strengthen it. So that should be okay for that Darlington now. And everything else looks okay. We need to do all the rest of the modifications. So let's get our temporary VCO out. And let's replace it. But just before I replace it, I just looked over to the crystal board. And I could see this. It almost looks like... It's been cut out of another radio one and soldered in. Because you can still see all the wires where somebody's just blatantly cut it out of another radio and soldered it into this one. Why? I suppose we'll never know. But anyway, for this, we're using the Microchips Volt Feed VCO. So basically, this has got a 5 volt regulator built into it. And we feed it off the 9 volt ABR. Gives a nice, stable VCO voltage without having to cut traces underneath and put regulators and whatnot underneath and that's where we'll be going from just that position there and we'll check out our vco voltage and everything's good so that's one small task done now we need to do the other ones we need to do the two biasing resistors we need to do the limiter uh, the ssb boost and all the other little bits and pieces that we do to one two ones. I've replaced those bias resistors, and there's a nice point seven of a volt on the final base. And we'll check the driver and point seven five. So yeah, that's fine, perfectly within spec. So now I need to dissect the channel uh, the band select. I need to know which one's mid-band, so we've got yellow wire for mid-band and the other two bands will be on the green and the blue wires which we're going to use on my mod board. Basically we're just going to take those wires off and feed them with a 10k resistor into my mod board because we've got 9 volts, if we drop it through a 10k it'll be fine for the pick chip. So out with my test PLL. And the weapon of choice today is the Microchips XL with its replacement PLL on it. Because obviously the PLL was broke in this one, so we had to replace it. So there's our two band wires with the two 10, um, 10k resistors. Plus we've got alphas and minus 5kc on this, which we're going to wire up to the switches. So we've got two resistors and a 22 mic capacitor. I always like to change this 22 mic because it has caused me trouble in the past. With it looking like it's it's leaking but if we put it on the capacitor tester it is okay but if we look closely at one of the legs something is going on with it but it's not affected it's it's um, working but we'll put another one in anyway so we need to get the three switches out from the front so one of them is going to be alphas, one of them is going to be pull minus 5kc, and one of them is going to be um, beep on and off. So we're using the clarifier for the alphas, we're using the tune for the minus 5kc, and we're using the RF gain for the um, beep. Now the original beep was broken, the thick film units failed, so we're going to fit a high gain 5 style bleep in. 
but we're going to use all the original wiring for this and I've not fitted a relay onto the beat board because there's already two relays in the unit and we can control the relays inside the radio from the beat board anyway using all its original wiring so basically I've just wired it up there and everything's working so everything now seems to be all good so what we're going to do is we're going to leave it on test for a few days see whether any, any other issues appear but I don't think it will it's been absolutely stable since we changed the PLL chip so what we've got there now on the band select we've got mid high in UK 40 and clarifier will be plus 10 kc for alphas pull on tune will be minus 5 kc and the rf gain pull will be beep on and off so everything seems bang on now we're receiving some stations it was a bit it was a bit um flat on the day of filming but we are getting something so if it behaves itself over the next few days it can go back to the customer and hopefully he'll be happy with it but anyway thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe join the facebook group and we'll see you in the next video